you know, we get an opportunity this Sunday against the Ravens, um, a team that's been winning for the past couple of years, been to the playoffs. So, you know, it'll be a true test for, for sure, but all these games that we played have been tests also. The 3-0 and Broncos are getting set for their toughest test of the season as the Baltimore Ravens come to town and we're getting you ready for kickoff. Hello, I'm Phil Milani alongside Sidney Jones and Eric Dalala. It's the toughest test of the season for the Broncos by far. And a big reason why is Lamar Jackson, the Ravens quarterback. How do you think the Broncos will try to slow him down? Yeah, well, Phil, I think key word there is slow him down because I don't know if Lamar Jackson can be completely stopped. You know, he's one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the league. And I think the Broncos defense is really going to have to try and make him one dimensional. And I think in order to do that, they're going to have to first and foremost stop the run. Lamar Jackson is the leading rusher for the Ravens, but luckily for the Broncos, this game is at home. So the, it being a mile high in elevation here, I don't know if we're going to see Lamar be able to run around like he normally does. Certainly will um, be able to run, but not to the extent he has been the first couple weeks of this season. But really hoping to see us apply, you know, this pass rush, apply more pressure, extra pressure than we have seen. And obviously Von Miller, he's already off to a hard start this season, being named the AFC Defensive Player of the Month. And I feel good about Malik Reed on the other side, too. Von Miller off to a, a really fast start this season. The Ravens come in with the top rushing attack in the NFL. The Broncos have the number two rush defense in the NFL, so a battle of some of the best uh, units in the entire league. Eric, how do you think they'll slow him down? Well, I wouldn't waste a guy as a spy on Lamar Jackson because whether it's Alexander Johnson or Justin Cernad, I'm not sure they can beat Lamar to the edge. So you don't want to have a guy there and kind of waste him, make it 11 on 10. So I would just play zone probably, keep people in front of you. Sydney mentioned stopping the run. You've got to put them in second and long, third and long situations. Ravens have not been good on third down at all. If you can figure out a way to stop them on those early downs, make Lamar throw the ball on third down, I think you can have success. But, Phil, I love a lot of these stats in this game. The DVOA. Exactly. <laughs> the uh, Ravens, with one more 100-yard game, will tie the longest streak in NFL history with 100 yards. Lamar Jackson, 39 touchdowns in a, or 39 games in a row with a touchdown. The Ravens have gone 46 consecutive games, scoring at least 14 points. So all that illustrates just how good they are on offense. So like Sydney said, you're not going to stop him completely, but you got to slow him down a little bit. And you do that by putting him in third and long. Defensive player of the month and Von Miller is going to be chasing him around all day. Uh, here's what he had to say this week. We're playing great team defense and you know we got a great team coming up this week. Um, it's, it's, it's really like a playoff game early in the season. You know, and it's a lot of these guys haven't even played in the playoff game before. And, you know, it's kind of been my message to these guys like, you know, this is this is a playoff game early in the season. This is this is how this is time for us to, you know, show what we got against a you know a worthy opponent, and you know that's where our focus has been. So Lamar Jackson goes to Louisville, wins a Heisman Trophy there. His predecessor Teddy Bridgewater uh, has a, a heck of a career there too with the Cardinals. Those two both from South Florida, very closely uh, tied together. Teddy Bridgewater off to a really hot start. Uh, like Von Miller, can he keep it going this this week? I think so, Phil. I mean, the Ravens' defense are, is allowing over 300 yards, passing yards per game, which sits at third worst in the league. And while the Ravens' defense, they do blitz a ton. We have seen time and time again how good Teddy is at escaping that pressure and extending plays on his feet, which I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to see that again this Sunday. He's certainly fun to watch. But, you know, for Teddy, we've seen just how consistent he is and, you know, has basically done everything the, the Broncos have asked for him. You know, he ranks second in completion percentage, is fifth in quarterback rating, and has yet to turn the ball over. So I think if he just comes out and does what he's been doing each week, he's going to be just fine. I think that's the key there, Cindy. You mentioned and not turning the ball over. No interceptions this season has been really key. Uh, do you think he keeps that going this week? Well, I hope so. And Cindy mentioned the blitz there. To me, that's what stands out because Teddy Bridgewater's second highest passer rating against the blitz. Lamar Jackson, much, much worse. So I think that's a place where Teddy Bridgewater holds an edge. All four of his touchdowns this season have come when opponents have sent an extra rusher. In addition to turnovers, Phil, it's about holding on to the ball. The Broncos have had a lot of drives here over eight minutes, I think four or five already this season. Only had one, I believe, all of last year. So if they can keep the ball, put some uh, drives together, keep Lamar Jackson off the field, that's going to help your defense. Obviously, the Ravens can't score if they're not on the field. So that, to me, is a big element as well. You know, staying on the field, avoiding turnovers, and handling the blitz. Teddy talked about his connection with the Baltimore Ravens quarterback. You know, we're both from South Florida, um, 32nd pick in the draft. Both got strong mothers. 
Um, so we um, have so much in common, and um, I'm happy for all the success that he's had in his career. I've uh, been following him since he got to Louisville. Everyone knew of him from the Divine video. Um, but, man, it's, it's great that, you know, he's made all the strides that he's made, you know, throughout the course of his career. Um, and I'm looking forward to just watching him compete, you know, against our defense. Um, and um, just, you know, I'm going to be rooting for him, but at the same time, rooting for us to come away with a victory. The Broncos are sitting at 3-0. They've won their first three games pretty comfortably, but they're not getting quite the national respect uh, maybe that some around here certainly feel like they deserve. And a big reason why is those first three opponents are a combined 0-9. That changes this week with the Ravens coming to town. Uh, what do you think a win this week would do for the Broncos? Yeah, Phil, I definitely think this week is going to be a true test. Like you said, there's been, you know, not a lot of respect around us being 3-0 just because all of our opponents have remained winless. Um, over the past three weeks, but I, I think a Broncos win this weekend will certainly solidify the, st the status of this team as being one of the top teams in the league. You know, a win over Lamar Jackson, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and over a team that's already beat the Chiefs, I, I think it's going to mean a lot. I think the defense is getting the respect. You know, I think you know Vic Fangio and the way that they performed the shutout last week. But for some reason, it's the whole team they're not buying in just yet. That would change with the win, huh? Yeah, certainly. And if Teddy Bridgewater can go out there and play really well, uh, this might sound a little bit crazy, but he's going to be a dark horse MVP candidate if he can go out there, throw two or three touchdowns, maybe score another one on the ground. I mean, if he goes out there and outduels Lamar Jackson, this Broncos team is at 4-0. You've beaten a division winner. You've got a lead in the AFC West. I mean, to me, that's the most valuable player because you look at this roster, the secondary's changed a little bit or a lot. There's a lot of turnover at corner, obviously, but Teddy is the main difference on this roster compared to last year. So if you're sitting at 4-0, you've got to say this is due to Teddy Bridgewater with a big game. I think not only are the Broncos going to get some national respect, but Teddy Bridgewater is going to get some too. Broncos 3-0 in the preseason, 3-0 to start the regular season. Uh, it does feel a little different around here. There's a, there's a positive energy moving forward. We certainly feel like the national media would catch on this week with a, with a win against the Ravens. But the Broncos, they don't necessarily even care about that. Yeah, I'll never discredit a win, but I definitely think the Ravens are a solid, a really good team for us to play against. Um, I think, like you said, they've played some really good opponents so far. They've shown what they can do. They've shown that they're a good team. So um, I think it is a good you know, measuring stick for us to see you know, how we're, how we're going to match up against them. I think they're a good team, but I also think we're a good team too. So uh, like I said, I'm never going to discredit a win, but also excited to play against them. Okay, let's wrap up this preview show here with predictions. Sydney, let's get a score. Phil, I think it's going to be a close, close game. I think it's going to be 21-20, Broncos on top. One point game. One point game. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be a great game. And like you said, things just feel a little different around here. And I think we're going to keep on rolling. Okay, Eric? Yeah, I think one point too. I think a little bit higher scoring, 24-23. We'll stay with the Broncos here. till they lose, Phil, I feel like you can't pick against them. What are you saying? Like a, a McManus 67-yard field goal? Is that Not quite, but I do think... We haven't seen a close game yet. The Broncos haven't been in one. I think Teddy Bridgewater leads the team down the field late, get a game-winning score. Okay, I say 24 Broncos, 13 Ravens. Eric, I know that's a big deal because the Ravens wouldn't get to 14 points. That's right, it would snap the streak. It's the second longest in history, Phil. Yeah, that they've scored 14 points. Huh? Yeah. Wow, that's, that would that'd be something. Why not uh, make it happen this weekend here in the Mile High City? That's going to do it for us, for Eric Dalala and Sidney Jones. I'm Phil Milani.